Guru Bhionam. Let me welcome you all for this fourth part of presentation. Proud to be a civil engineer. So let me share the screen. So the contents which we are dealing in this presentation. In the third part of presentation, we already covered with uh, different scopes of different fields of civil engineering. And in this fourth part of presentation, I'm going to cover on areas of roads, bridges, dams. Along with that, the presentation uh, it gives a clear information on infrastructure, types of infrastructure, roles of civil engineering in infrastructure development, and how this infrastructure development plays a vital role in terms of uh, economy development of our country. Okay. So let me start with the uh, presentation road bridges in that. Uh, guys, uh, here you can see uh, the definition of a road. How you define a road? A road is an identifiable route. So people call it as a path or a platform where it uh, connects to, you know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, localities. Okay. So that is how a road is defined. So it is an uh, identifiable route, way or a path. So between two or major places. So roads basically typically smooth or paved and even otherwise prepared to allow easy travel. So that is how we use roads, isn't it? So roads are simply any pathway, so which is fit for riding. So if you see, the United States has the largest network of roadways in any single country in the world, I mean, of any single country in the world, so which is having around 64,30,366 kilometers, the data which was uh, produced in the year 2005. So now it is around, you know, it crossed around 150 lakhs kilometers. So now if you see the uh, Indian road network, so India has the second largest road system in the world with uh, 33 lakhs 83,344 kilometers. That data was till 2002. But now as per 2018 statistics, so now the kilometers, it's gone around the 120 lakhs kilometers. So the People's Republic of China, so is the third largest road network. So where it is 18,000, I mean, 18 lakhs, 70,000 kilometers of the roadways. So the data was published in the year 2004. Now it is around the 90 lakhs kilometers in China. So this is how the road networks are developing in very fast way. So if you see the classification of roads, so based on size, a single road will be there, double road, four lane road, six lane road, right? So if you see Vijayawada Highway, it is a six lane road. So you can see three lanes on the left side and three lanes on the right side. So now all our outer ring roads are eight lanes, okay? The lane is nothing but, so it's a carriage way, so where vehicle pass on, Okay, so the minimum lane width will be 3.75 meters. So based on the Nagpur road plan, the national principles, so how the, our national, uh, I mean, our roads are classified. So it's based on the, uh, you know, Nagpur road plan, there will be a national highway, state highways, major district roads, minor and other district roads, and village roads, isn't it? So based on the type of road surface, so basically roads are classified as a bituminous road, which we call it as a tar road from Dambura, so which is called as a bituminous road. It can also be called as a rigid pavement. Sorry, 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 sorry guys, sorry for wrong information. Bituminous road, it can also be called as a flexible pavement. Concrete road, which is a rigid pavement. Waterborne macadam roads and mud roads. So this is how roads are classified based on that surface. Okay. 
So let's see the components of road. So basically roads will have a carriageway. It will have a curve. So at both ends of the carriageway we call it as a curve. It can also be called as a berm. And it will have a drainage where the rainwater has to pass through that uh, you know drain pouch. So every road will have a shoulder. It will have a footpath and even the cyclic track. So that is how basically a road components will be. If you see the uh, cross section of the road, you can see the natural ground surface. So you can see the natural ground surface here, right? Above that, there will be a sub base course, base course, surface course, and there will be a varying course on top of the road. So on this, vehicles will pass on. Okay, that is how the roads have a different components. So now you can see the different uh, highway, okay, road highway, so which was uh, mentioned here. So this is called a three lane and three lane, so overall six lane road, right? So this is the complete carriageway on both ends, left hand side and right hand side of the road, right? So here you can see a uh, cement concrete curb and cutter at the ends. So this is the cyclic, uh, cyclic, uh, cyclic pathway, okay? And this is how the cross section of road looks like. And you can see the other different modes of uh, no roads, right? And here you can see uh, different uh, cross sections of the road. So which is a blacktop running surface for skip resistance. So every road will have a blacktop. Below that, there will be a blacktop layer for strength and to seal time. I mean, seal the road surface. And next one, it is a small stone foundation material will be placed beneath the uh, road surface and the large stone foundation material will be placed at last, right? And this is the natural ground surface, natural ground, uh, you know, cross section. And there will be a footpath over here. So this is the filter pipe and drainage pouch. The road drainages will, uh, you know, uh, water dry, rainwater dryness lines will be there and filter pipe okay so this is how the road cross section looks like and these are the different ways of picture this is the national highway and this is the district road so the national highway district roads all they vary based on its uh, length, uh, width of the carriageways okay and even the features also will be varied and this is the district road and village road. One second, then. Okay. Uh, let's see the uh, different cross section. And see, this is how uh, natural uh, road cross section looks. Mm. Cross section of the road. And this is the uh, IBA trail road station. Okay, that is how roads are classified. And let's come to the bridges. And uh, how you define a bridge? So bridge is a structure. So which built to span a gorge, valley, or a road, or a railway track, a river, or body of water. So bridge is a structure which is constructed at a certain elevated height where it is going to cross a valley or a road or a river or a railway track, whatever it is. So that's how we define bridges like, uh, you know, ROB. ROB stands for railway overbridge, river overbridge, road overbridge, okay? So basically the bridges are designed for trains, pedestrian walks, road traffic, and even for pipeline. So even if you want to run a pipeline at a certain elevated height, you can make use of these bridges to run the pipeline or a waterway for water transport to batch traffic. I think uh, 
in the part three of my presentation, I have shown you uh, a structure, I mean a canal, which was at a particular elevated height. So that canal was resting uh, with the help of a pier that the bridge was supporting it. And aqueduct is also a bridge, which carries water. So that is what I am talking about. Resembling a viaduct, so which is a bridge that connects the points of equal heights, isn't it? Say a road rail bridge carries both road and rail traffic. So it is called double decker bridge. The bridge which carries both railways and roadways in the same deck. I mean, so in the double deck. On top it may be a roadways and bottom it will be a railways. So that is how railroad bridges also will be there. And a bridge's structural efficiency may be considered, so which is going to be a ratio of load carried by the bridge uh, to its mass, so which is given to the specific set of material type. And uh, and again, uh, as how the roads are classified, here the, even the bridges are also classified based on its different uh, classification. Let me show you one by one how the bridges are classified. The first one is based on action. Based on action, your bridges are classified as a beam bridge, cantilever bridge, arch bridges, suspension bridges, table stayed bridges, and truss bridges. Right? Let me see if you find any picture of each bridges over here. I think this connecting to the internet. So there is going to show you how the beam bridge looks like. Taking time, guys. Yeah. See, if you click that, so by that so you can find uh, what we mean beam bridge. Okay. So let me show you the pictures uh, straight away here. In my presentation, so without clicking that uh, hyperlink. So these are different types of bridges based on the action beam bridge, where the bridge is supported by the beam action. Cantilever bridges, where one end will be fixed and the other end will be free. Arch bridge, which is in the form of an arch action. Suspension bridges, which will be suspended with the help of a cables and cable stayed bridges again, and truss bridges, so which will be in the form of a truss move. And next, uh, bridges are classified based on the materials. So there will be a concrete bridge, steel bridge, timber bridge, and composite bridges. And next, see the purpose. The bridges are classified based on its purpose. For what you are constructing that bridge. So it will be a road bridge, rail bridge, rail and road bridge, so which is called a double decker bridge, pedestrian bridge, and aqueduct. So aqueduct is the one where the canal will be at a certain height. Okay, water flows on that uh, bridge, so which we call as an aqueduct. Okay, so aqueduct is one, there will be uh, a canal below the bridge and canal over the bridge. So, like that, uh, two way canal uh, crossings will be there, so which we call as an aqueduct. So, based on the support, so bridges are classified based on the types of supports. Simply supported bridge where the bridge is supported at both ends. Continuous bridge, so where it will be supported with the num n number of pillars. Fixed bridge, both ends are fixed. Cantilever bridge, one end is fixed and the other end is free. So that is how bridges are classified based on the support types of support. And let's see the components of the bridge. So here uh, clearly you can uh, see the different components with the uh, numbering mentioned over here. The first one is called foundation, so which is called as a substructure, okay, which will be below the ground. So the foundations may be a raft foundation, well kissons, pile foundations, okay. So that's how. So if you go to the geotechnical aspect, so basically foundations are classified into two categories one is shallow foundation, other one is a deep foundation, okay. Raft foundations and uh, isolated foundations, compound found, compound footings, they are all comes under the shallow foundation. Piling well croissants well comes under the deep foundation. So that is how uh, below the <coughs> ground level, the substructure of your bridge components will be there. And the two is pier. The center portion of the two major abutment supports is called a pier. Okay, so this is called a pier. And third one, third one is nothing but a structural element which transfers load from superstructure to substructure. 
Okay. So this is the media where we are using bearing to transfer load from superstructure to substructure. So the third one is called bearing. So we can see these bearings in all our flyovers, um, metro rail. Okay. So where there will be in uh, bearings placed uh, in between uh, superstructure, in between deck and uh, pier. So which will be in black in color. So I think now you can try to uh, you know uh, observe whenever you are uh, going below the flyover. So there are different types of bearings available like uh, elastomeric bearings, spot bearings, okay, so like this. So bearing is an element, structural element which transfers flow from superstructure to substructure. And the next one is uh, deck slab. So this is the fourth one is the deck slab. So this deck slab will be an RCC deck slab. So it will be made up of concrete and steel. And sometimes uh, this deck uh, will have a composite uh, structure like steel I-beams along with the uh, concrete uh, deck elements. And next one, fifth part is the roadways. So fifth number is not here. So the fifth is nothing but uh, on the top of the deck, so there will be a roadway. This is the roadway. Okay, the number was not mentioned. And the sixth one is the railing. So, so this railing can also be called as a crash barrier. What do you mean crash barrier? Crash barriers will support, I mean, which resists the uh, vehicle, uh, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, when it hits the curb and uh, you know, not to fall from the bridge. So that is how the crash barriers are going to protect your, uh, you know, uh, vehicles towards uh, crashing below the bridge. Okay. So there will be a steel railings and the crash barriers are, can be provided over here. And the next one is abutment. Abutment is the one where the bridge is supporting at both ends. So along with the abutment, there will be an embankment. Okay. So on the left side and right side of the abutment, which is constructed parallelly to the abutment. Okay. These are the components of the bridge. And you can see the different types of bridges. So here you can see the arch bridge, a beam bridge, so which is a timber beam bridge and mother, cable straight bridge. Right. This is how the bridge was uh, suspended. So I think now in our Hyderabad at the Durgam Cheru, you can see the cable state bridge, which is uh, recently constructed by LNT Metro. It is not under uh, service, but uh, it is going to be open uh, within a short period of time. And next one is the cantilever bridge. So this is how the cantilever bridge looks like, where one end will be fixed and uh, at uh, mid of the span, it can be open. Okay. I mean, not in terms of opening. So there will be only uh, free end, okay, it is not connected. So, the basic uh, types of bridges, beam bridge will be like this arch bridge, truss bridge, cable straight bridge, rigid frame bridge, and suspension bridge. Okay, see, there will be a other bridge called as a girder bridge. So, where they use the uh, ice steel girders for, for the deck, where it can be able to carry more spans and more in weight okay so if you want more columns free spans so definitely you can go with the girder bridge where it was uh, formed with the uh, steel uh, girders and mother so there will be a steel flange web bend plane and you can even prepare a box girder also like this uh, there will be one plane and two webs along with the bottom plane so to carry more spans you can make use of this girder bridges and you can see one example over here, which is the Namihaya Bridge in Osaka, Japan, where it is accommodating a span of 700 meters. Okay. Total length of the bridge is 700 meters, where the center span, so this is the center span where it is uh, having 300 meters without any support in between. So this is the longest span, right? So next one is arch bridge where the load transformation takes place in a form of an arch action. Okay, so you can see example over here, which is a uh, Maiwa bridge in Tokyo. So the longest length uh, of the bridge is uh, 924 meters. It is almost 0.9 kilometers, and the center span of the bridge is a 518, which is a half a kilometer of span. So that is how arch bridges can also be accommodated. So where you required uh, a column-free spacing of the structure. Truss bridge, so truss bridges are look like this, which is made up of steel completely. 
so you can see one example over here which is uh, my my kid uh, uh, mamiyaki bridge in japan which is made up of uh, steel trusses so this is how steel truss bridge so this is the inverted steel truss okay so where the loads uh, transformation takes place uh, uh, through five send trusses over here so the center stance of the bridge is uh, almost of uh, half a kilometer you can go with this uh, bridges with a stance of 40 meters to half kilometer cable stayed bridge so we, we use this kind of bridges for a uh, long stance the world's longest bridge in tata uh, bridge which is in japan okay so where the uh, whole deck you can see the deck over here right i will show you the notion so this is a deck so this deck was supported by cables and this cables were connected to the center most uh, portion of the structure which is called the pylon okay there are different types of pylons there will be single pylon double pylon portal pylon and a shaped pylon right so this is how cable stayed bridges are looks like and where it can accommodate uh, a stance of uh, 480 meters so this is a suspension bridge so there is slight difference between cable stayed bridge and suspension bridge isn't it so here in cable stayed bridge your deck was supported by springs which is under tension in the vertical way right so again the center most portion is called a pylon over here this is how the suspension bridge looks like even it can accommodate the stands of around 1 km at a time so single stand we can have of 1 km without any support in between that is how the suspension bridges can be utilized okay so let me show you different types of bridges here uh, at the same picture like this cable stayed truss to bridge solid ripped bridge truss bridge okay and suspension bridge so you can see again uh, uh, the bridges based on the stands this is a continuous stand bridge simple span bridge simple span in the sense you are uh, uh, being was supported on uh, piers okay so there won't be any continuity in the beams so that is called a simply supported beam so this is a continuous span and this is a cantilever span where one end is fixed and other end is fixed so you can see the difference in uh, uh, spans based on its supports right so you can see this span is uh, fixed at, at this point and free at this point this is called a cantilever span Okay, and the, this is also cantilever span. The difference of these two is, which is suspended span here, and this is a cantilever span on its own, right? And these are the different types of culverts. So we can use uh, these culverts for spans which is less than six meters. Okay, so when there is a span of the bridge is less than six meters, we go with the culvert, like a pipe culvert, single cell box culvert, double cell box culvert, like this. So you can see these culverts uh, at the outer ring road when you cross uh, below the uh, so if you want to move from one service road to other service road there will be a big box culvert so where it can be used for crossing the uh, you know bridges where the spans are less than six meters so culverts are small bridges normally with one span built across a small stream drains or sewer carrying roads on top. Okay, this there is other culverts like arch culvert, slab culvert also will be there, and the arch bridge culvert which looks like this. Okay, so these are the different uh, pictures of uh, bridges. And next, coming to third part of this dam, so we finish the roads, we finish the bridges. The third one is one of the important civil drain structures is dam. Okay, so dam. How you define a dam? Dam is uh, nothing but it is a barrier which stores water at two levels, right? So what is the storage uh, at the two levels? One is the one is the uh, upstream level. The other one is the downstream level. Okay, these are the two levels. In between two levels, the barrier which was constructed to arrest water at the upstream level, that structure is called as a dam. So the primary purpose of dam what? it is to store water whenever available in plenty for use during scarcity 
So whenever flux comes, plenty of water comes on the surface of the ground, isn't it? So that water will be stored at some place. So where we can store at reservoirs and the structure which is, uh, you know, uh, obstructing the flow of water and storing at some uh, big uh, structure which is called as a reservoir. Okay. So whenever the water is uh, uh, having, I mean, used during scarcity, we can make use of the reservoir water in terms of drinking and even in terms of irrigation purpose. So built across rivers. So even uh, the dams can be built across rivers. Excess water is released to river and useful water is transformed through canal. So that is the main purpose of the dam. So if you come to the components of the dam, so dams are also having different components as like the bridges. Uh, coming to the dam, body of dam, the whole the structure of the dam will be there. And the dams usually have a foundation and the road top for the uh, you know uh, lifting of gates. So there will be a road top even on the dam also. Gates at lifting the devices, spillways will be there. Spillways or fluids where the water flows, okay, uh, from the dam. Uh, canal. Canal is also a structure which is at a reservoir level. Reservoir, main river course, filling basin, drainage gallery, drainage gallery or inspection gallery. So these are the different components of the bridge. Okay. You can locate all these components of the bridges uh, here. At the same time, you can see the components and forces also in the dams. So this is the main structure of the dam, right? You can see the main structure. You can even observe the different components of the dam. So this is the foundation. And this is called the drainage gallery or inspection gallery. And this is the reservoir, which is at the upstream level. And the other level, which is called the downstream level. So this is the spilling basin. So where to control the velocity of water, right? So at the downstream level. And the next one is spillway, where the water will pass on to the spillway and where it forms the hydraulic jump. See, I think you all observed this uh, hydraulic jump at the C7 dam, isn't it? So where the water flowing through this spillway. And at the top of the spillway, there is a gate, so which is, uh, uh, which is operating and where it which allows water from upstream to downstream. Okay, so this is the spillway, and you can try to observe different uh, components and forces in the dam, right? And here the forces is so this vertical force is the self weight of the dam, and this resisting force is through the foundation, and this is the water pressure from the reservoir, which is the lateral force to the dam. Okay, so this is how the forces can also be. Place it here. And you can see the top view of the dam, top view of the plan. Okay. Earlier you have seen the elevation. It's Mancusin, sorry, you can Mancusin in a cross section. So this is the cross section and this is the top view. At top view, you can see a reservoir which is at the upstream level and uh, the bridge which is supported at two abutments. And this is the roadway on the top of the dam. And this is called a left bank canal and right bank canal. Through these canals only water will flow uh, and uh, supplies water to the irrigation system, irrigation canal, irrigation fields. And this is the downstream level, which is the main river course. Okay, this is the top plan of the I mean, plan of the dam. And you can see the different uh, functions of a dam. So dam is uh, not uh, a single functioning uh, purpose. So where we can use dams for multifunctioning. So let me show you the functioning of a dam over here. So dam can be functioned to generate power. Dam can be functioned to stabilize water flow or irrigation. It can be functioned for flood prevention. It can be functioned for land reclamation and water diversion. So this is how dams are going to be functioned. That is how dams are called multifunctional structures. A dam is a multifunctional structure. So these are the examples where I can show. I think you can see our CCLM dam will generate power. Nagarjun Sagar dam, right? Like this, all dams are there in a, a few of dams which are have, having the turbines in it and there it uh, generates power. Okay. So this is the different functions of a dam. And coming to the classification of dam. So you basically dam, dams are classified based on the size based on the function and based on the materials used. 
okay so let's see uh, based on the size function and materials one by one and uh, uh, apart from the size uh, the based on the size uh, again the sizes are classified a small dam which is having a, a span less than 10 meters medium sized dam which is the span is of having 10 to 25 meters large dam greater than 25 meters and major dam greater than 150 meters so that is how dams are classified based on the size what is the next one function and material let's see what are the different functions and classification based on the purpose so as i told you so there are different functions hydroelectric dam the dam which can generate power irrigation dam water supply dam for city for the purpose of drinking water recreation navigation through canals industrial use flood control habitat dam for fishes and uh, wildlife and effluent containing dams from industry mine factory etc multipurpose dam so this is how the dams are classified based on the different purposes okay so let's see uh, materials based on the materials also dams were classified like this masonry dam so which is made up of uh, masonry stones concrete dam timber dam steel dam earth dam rock fill dam composite dam see how the dams are classified it's based on the materials and again uh, based on the action action in the sense in the terms of force okay so there is a dam called gravity dam which will be uh, retained based on its self weight okay arch dam where the dam will be in arch action like this arch action saddle dam check dam diversion dam overflow dam copper dam okay so this is how dams are classified based on the action so you can see the pictures of different types of dams over here so this is called a gravity dam okay this is called gravity dam so where the water is flowing over the dam okay so where this dam is uh, arresting the water at the upstream level okay and there is no sluice there is no spillways nothing so where the water is overflowing from this this is called gravity dam timber dam the structure which was constructed with the help of a timber so san luis dam near so where you can see the calvin and embankment dam like this and steel dam even dams are also made up of steel steel structure copper dam okay this is the copper dam why copper dam will be constructed copper dam will be constructed whenever there is some construction is going on so to divert water the temporary structure we construct in a form of a dam so this is called a copper dam power generation plant this is how the turbines work and the power will be generated from the power generation plant so this is called a spillway where the water flows through on the surface of the structure so this is a hoover arch dam so this is a timber dam right so this is uh, constructed with the help of uh, timber material and steel dam so steel dam will be look like this so this is the water level okay so arch dam so where the bridge will be in arch action rock fill dam the dam which is constructed with the help of a rock rock uh, you know stone pitching Okay, this is called stone pitching, and stones are pitched on the surface of the embankment. This is called rock pitching, and the solid gravity dam, where the structure is withstanding on its self weight through its gravity. So this is called a solid rock gravity dam. Combined earth and rock pitching dam. So you can see both types of dams over here, which is the combined earth, which is filled with the earthen material, and the, which is filled with the stone filling. Okay, this is how combined earth and rock pitching dam. Looks like, and this is an earthen dam. Okay, these are the different roads, bridges, and dams. Next, coming to the infrastructure. So, what do you mean infrastructure? You, in uh, smart cities, we usually use a term called infrastructure. Right? So, even the smart cities also like uh, infrastructure development and so on. For our economical growth, the infrastructure plays a vital role and so on. So, what do you mean infrastructure? infrastructure is defined as it is a framework of supporting system consisting of roads airports bridges buildings parks and other amenities for the comfort of mankind so that is what exactly the infrastructure ippudu memmal evaraina what do you mean infrastructure ante 
infrastructure in the sense development of roads airports bridges buildings parks in a particular city so that is how we define an infrastructure facility center okay so infrastructure deals with so basically if any city or any place if it is developing in terms of infrastructure development infrastructure development and ev develop aithe what infrastructure development antaru ante transportation in terms of roads in terms of railway in terms of ports harbors in terms of air travel or airport next the television networks so if you find a huge uh, networking in terms of television so uh, television networks ekku unna kuda infrastructure development avutu telephone networks like land uh, line connections and mobile phone connections and uh, mobile towers and uh, so on energy sector in terms of electrification reduction in energy loss use of renewable sources like solar energy wind energy biogas energy tidal energy where there is a coastal area okay wind uh, like you know um, um, uh, what we call uh, wind turbines okay these are all comes under the energy sector see any city which is using all these renewable energy sources so uh, definitely it deals with the infrastructure development as agricultural activity like like largest economic investment and matter and the construction activity which is the second largest economy in india so india is a developing uh, its economy towards construction okay why because there is a huge construction activity takes place in india so that is the reason why india is the second largest economy in india okay and india's infrastructure policy so this information will use uh, what is the infrastructure policy and how much uh, power is generating through this uh, different uh, uh, structures available and uh, what is the um, mode of uh, railway stations um, what is the um, what is the length of uh, roadways available okay how the infrastructure policy there in our india it shows uh, this information so you can see like this uh, modernization and redevelopment of four metro and 35 non metro airports so now if you take example uh, the hyderabad hyderabad is developing uh, towards its infrastructure development like anything so nowadays you are seeing uh, flyovers at every places metro rail developed and there is an easy access access to airports so there is a huge uh, electrification taking place okay so there is a huge uh, uh, usage of uh, non renewables i mean uh, renewable sources okay so that is how uh, Uh, the development of uh, infrastructure policy takes place at every state, and even the India also they are looking after. And let's see why infrastructure growth, why infrastructure growth is needed, why it requires. So one thing majorly, undoubtedly, it is a political will. So political will always makes our infrastructure growth. Funding from multinational agencies such as the World Bank, Japan Bank. reserve bank of india which always supports uh, towards our infra infrastructure development increased the private participation okay and the innovative modes of funding like the set on petrol special tax uh, leaving tonnage tax infrastructure tax in bangalore infrastructure tax in all cities like a bot projects built operate and transfer see you can see the best example of a bot project is our lnt metro see lnt metro is a bot project why it is called bot project because lnt construction built metro and they will operate after 30 years they will transfer to our government that is how bot stands for so our lnt metro is a bot project where a company will build it will operate for a few years and then it will transfer to the government okay so that is how there are different types of projects like bot projects bop projects ppp projects okay um like that okay public private partnership projects uh, bill of quantities so th in that way there are different projects available so recent statistics about uh, indian infrastructure progress as you can see it's uh, old information no? and you can see the impact of infrastructure development of the country so definitely infrastructure plays a vital role towards the development of any country in in the, in the world see that there will be an increase in food production protection from drought famine and flood okay healthy and comfortable housing facilities will be there in the infrastructure uh, uh, place where uh, the development uh, takes place safe domestic and industrial water supply 
safe and scientific waste disposal will be there. Improvement in communication and transportation. Generation of electricity from nuclear, hydrogen, thermal, solar, and wind energy, where they are making use of renewable sources. Improved wealth, prosperity, standard of living, overall growth of a nation. See, this is what exactly the infrastructure development of any country. So, if you take India, India is developing all these areas, isn't it? So, that is how our India is a developing country towards uh, infrastructure development. So, some impacts of infrastructure facility on socio-economic growth of a nation. So, definitely there will be a huge impact in uh, socio-economic growth. So, if you see our India, there is a large scale budget allocation for infrastructure leads to agriculture and industrial development. If you see our annual budget, there is a huge uh, budget will be allocated for only for the infrastructure facility. Developing of uh, education institutions, developing of uh, transportation system like roadways, railways, airports. Okay, developing of some industrial sectors. So in that way, there is a huge budget which we allocated for this infrastructure development. Okay, so to make all rural areas to urbanizations. Okay, developing a huge smart cities and uh, you know exp explosion in the population in cities and improper care for agricultural sector. It is going to be eradicated. So like this, there is a huge impact of infrastructure development. So in terms of social economic growth will be there. Okay. So definitely employment will be there. And even we should look after the agricultural sector and we should safeguard our rural places also to you know um, safeguard our uh, you know um, agricultural people along with our uh, daily needs. So role of civil engineers in infrastructure development, definitely there will be a huge role. Uh, by the civil engineer in this uh, infrastructure development, like construction of roads, railways, ports, harbors, and airports will be done by a civil engineer. Construction of dams, proper utilization of water resources, construction of housing, commercial and industrial complexes, uh, maintenance of facilities, and rebuilding, rehabilitation, and retrofitting, repairs. Everything will be uh, looking after by a civil engineer only in the infrastructure development. Okay, so you can see the road development takes place in India uh, in, at uh, you know, different sectors. And these are the road projects under execution at the, this is the old information. Number. And you can see the port development, how the port development takes place. So you can see the port development at the coastal areas like the different places in Telangana and Andhra. Okay. So you see some statistics given. And next one is airports, so which is ready to take off, like upsurge in air traffic, upgradation of metro city airports. So to have a better connectivity uh, from uh, city to airport, which are located out, out, out. I mean, uh, you know, outreach of the uh, cities. Development of new airports will be takes place in the infrastructure development. Okay, so I think India is having a huge uh, economic zone, so which is uh, growing like a mushroom so across India. Okay. And we can see the different structures, infrastructures, I can call it as. So these are all infrastructure developments only. Okay. <laughs> so you can see a picture uh, at the right hand side where a person is uh, holding a burger and, uh, you know, a Coke can uh, in her left hand. <laughs> so this is a mixture of technologies. Only. India is a you know, mixture of traditions, mixture of culture, mixture of uh, technology as well. So here you can see the mixture of technology growth and uh, raw rural strength, so which is a blend of Western and traditional culture. Okay. And finally, I would like to share a small assignment questions to you guys. So after completion of these uh, four parts of uh, Proud to be a civil engineer, I request all uh, budding civil engineers who are uh, doing your first year. Uh, civil engineering, please try to answer these questions uh, in your own way by having these presentations with you. If I, uh, I mean, if you have a time, please try to answer these questions. It will, it, it will be something like an assignment to you, so where you can, uh, you know, um, uh, attempt this and uh, you can find yourself how much you learn from this presentation. So, what is civil engineer? What are the main functions of a civil engineer? This is the main disciplines of civil engineering. What is infrastructure? What is the influence of infrastructure? You can draw a neat sketch of road cross sections, 
classify the roads according to different classification systems, draw a neat sketch of a dam at the cross section, even the top view, classify the dams according to different classifications, what are the functions of roads, bridges, and dams, and you can draw a neat sketch of a bridge and its uh, different uh, components, and classify the bridges according to different classification systems. See, guys, this assignment is only uh, to ensure that how much you learned from this presentation. Okay, so that is how it is going to be useful. And uh, you know, definitely, if you uh, uh, you know attempt any interview in your civil, in uh, any field of civil engineering, uh, you may come across at least one or two, three questions from this assignment questions. Okay, because these are all general questions. What every industrial person or every uh, Employer will uh, always look at uh, you to get asked to, to you know answer at least one or two three questions from this the answers from these questions. Okay, so this is how the assignment is going to be useful to you. So please try to answer. If you have any uh, comments on these uh, answers, if you want to share your answers with me, definitely you can uh, you know uh, share your answers to me in uh, Facebook uh, live. So it is Omsi uh, Krishna Basava, or you can share with to my YouTube channel, which is Vamsi Krishna Basava, right? So definitely I'm gonna give suggestions. I will read out your uh, assignment answers and I can share you a lot of information, right? So thank you so much for spending more time in uh, listening to uh, uh, my presentation on a proud to be signature. Now I hope everyone uh, felt proud uh, being a civil engineer by having a wide spectra of civil engineering uh in this uh you know a small world right so thank you so much and please keep continuing uh viewing my channel where you can get more information about the